Oh, hey, Grant. It sure is quiet with the machines off, isn't it? Yeah, we're shut down for maintenance, so I've got the crews cleaning the presses. Oh? Yeah, we're getting up dirt and oil that's been up there for years. Up there? Yeah, on top of the presses. Maybe you should show me. Yeah, let's go. But there's no roof. What are they standing on? Are they on two by fours? They're not harnessed to anything. This is totally against OSHA regulations. We need to get a ladder and get them down. No, actually, let's use a scissor lift. But you should see the dirt. Come on now. Now, before someone gets terribly hurt. Come on, let's just get you back to the office. I will call OSHA myself. But they really are fine. Okay, okay, geez. We can't get anything done, I guess. Please make a comment. What stupid and illegal stuff have you stopped in the workplace? You are a blank slate and your career is fluid. You can transition slowly or suddenly. You can decide things aren't working or that you could be of better use doing something else. Let's look a little bit into career transitions. If you need to walk away from the career you chose when you were young and maybe only had a hazy idea of what you wanted to study, well, you can. But maybe you are saying, I've got student loans, a mortgage, my kids are young, my partner and I don't have any flexibility, etc. In other words, I'm locked in. But that is not always true. I found a few examples of this. A talented, hardworking computer engineer found himself four years into his career working late into the night, gulping down caffeine and fast food, burned out and exhausted, and decided to teach yoga. I've found school teachers who burned out in public schools and decided to become life coaches and textbook writers. I've heard of lawyers who became advocates for the poor and the homeless. You have to believe in yourself enough to take that first step, even if you're afraid, because some risks are worth taking. If you feel people are judging you, number one, this may be an overinflated feeling, a feeling you have argued yourself into, and number two, you can let that go and ignore it and go forward anyway. You can do what nourishes you. You get to define success on your terms instead of someone else's, like your parents, your friends, your partner. Here's how to open yourself to the possibilities. Have a lottery fantasy, go buy a ticket, Dream of how you would spend your time if you did not have to worry about money. Of course you're not going to win. But if you do, send me a tip. 5% will do just fine. But spend the time spinning out your fantasy. How would you spend time? Let's say your lottery fantasy involves volunteering with hungry families or international travel or planting huge gardens. Then search for careers with those actions in mind. For example, if your fantasy involves spending lots of time at the beach, maybe you can make money teaching people to windsurf, snorkel, etc. Maybe just two weeks a year you do this with an outfit in the Grand Caymans that you found because your cousin spent a month there last December. Then eventually your kids go off to college and your partner's into it, so you expand it to three months a year, then all year. You see how this works? Patience and forward momentum, however slow, is the key. Brainstorm all the multitude of possibilities of new skills and experience you could pick up that floats your boat. And maybe you take a job because it can teach you something that you need to know so you can do it in the future. But you say, I've got this big house and big mortgage and student loans and so I have to keep this awful job and long commute. Do you though? What if you look around and say, this stuff is no longer bringing me happiness, I can live without it, I can get along with a small place, I can find the work that thrills me in my own town. Also, do not let your current company work you to death. Set reasonable hours with late work being rare. You have to be assertive and confident to do this and be ready to escape a bad situation. I once signed up for a carpool and had to leave on time. I also let my boss know whenever he was holding me up and that the carpoolers were waiting for me in the parking lot. You can use your kids as an excuse or an appointment, class, anything that you are fully entitled to show up for. If they throw guilt at you, let it bounce off you. If you're in a job where you meet with others in different time zones, then take that equivalent time out of your work day. If this is not going to work for your boss, find a way out of it for your own mental health. If you are working remotely, this does not give your employer permission to expect you online more than eight hours a day. 
Also, realize that when people who depend on an income that suddenly disappears often land on their feet, sometimes in even better situations than what they had. If you think this is impossible, I urge you to widen your gaze. Pick up careers books, look around, talk to people, and have some hope. No one who is worth your while is judging you. You are the architect of your own life. Cheers.